This very special occasion for Sheboygan County. You are the lucky 180, might be 182 now. We even have some seats up here. Um, there are many, many others on the waiting list for this event. I am Betsy Alice, and it is my privilege to serve as the Sheboygan County Chamber's Executive Director. I'd like to ask the Chamber's Executive Committee members to stand. These are really the folks who guide the Chamber through all of its major decisions and lay the plans to create in our county a wonderful business climate and fabulous communities. I'm going to call you by name, just hold your applause. Terry Lillisand, Steve Harrison, Neil Larson, and Louis Gentine, all vice presidents. Jim Maxson is our immediate past president. Mike Brookins, our treasurer, is in Germany today doing global business. And president-elect George Brugenthies. And our 2011 president, Matt Quashus. David Gass is the chair of our business advocacy committee. And a big applause for these folks. few others with us today, and pardon me if I didn't see you come in, so I, I just looked at the list that we had. We have Mayor Ryan from the City of Sheboygan, Mayor Pullman from Plymouth, Patrick Drynan from the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corp, and we have Gary Domus, who's the president of that organization, Adam Payne, our county administrator, and Mike Vandersteen, who may or may not stand up. There he is waving. <laughs> I have our chamber director, Lisa Hurley, from Plymouth. And she was at that table. OK. Governor Walker, welcome to Sheboygan, the spirit on the lake, located in the most beautiful and vibrant county in Wisconsin. I tend to get breathless when I talk about it, so bear with me. I am a newcomer here. I'll always be a newcomer here, from what I understand. <laughs> So I'm careful. In this place, you can jump into the excitement of waterfront sailing, surfing, swimming, sand beaches, boardwalk, charter fishing. You can brace yourself for the thrills of Road America racing. Experience the creativity the John Michael Kohler Art Museum, the Above and Beyond Children's Museum, and our beautiful Wild Center. You can step back in time at the state's Wade House Museum which is going to be expanding, and our own county historical museum. You can feel the exhilaration of bicycling or running our top-rated trails, walking our beaches, kayaking our incredible rivers. You can accept the challenge of playing five, five, count them, of the top 100 golf courses in the country in one county. Yes, according to Golf Digest. From PGA to LPGA championships, to the NASCAR race, to the Nation's Cup this fall, and indeed, this is the first Nation's Cup in our entire country, Sheboygan County is the place to be. The strength of our business community is unrivaled and represented well here today in all of its diversity. Entrepreneurs, retailers, professional services, healthcare, financial services, and a very long list of global and national brands from Sargento and Kohler to Johnsonville, Acuity, and others. Our chamber has 830 company members, and I can't possibly name them all right now, um, or you wouldn't get to talk. Um, <laughs> above all, ours is a county full of friendly people who care deeply about each other and about the quality of life that we have here. Just last week, Business Week named Sheboygan Wisconsin's best place to raise a family due in part to the strength and leadership of the educational offerings here from preschool to postgraduate degrees. So you are in wonderful company here, Governor. And we hope you will visit us often when you have more time to Sheboygan with us. It's the new verb. <laughs> Governor Walker will share his remarks with us today and will allow plenty of time to welcome any questions you may have. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce the governor of the state of Wisconsin, Scott Walker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be back, not only in Sheboygan and Sheboygan County, but in this hall. The first time I was here, I had dinner many, many moons ago with Mike Muth uh, overlooking the lakefront. And uh, he introduced me to the great view that you have here. And uh, like Mike, there have been great, plenty of great champions for Sheboygan and Sheboygan County throughout the years. Uh, probably none greater than Mike was, but uh, I certainly appreciate the chance to come back and to be, you acknowledged uh, all the folks here. I, I want to acknowledge uh, someone who shares a little bit of time with us in the Capitol, too, Mike Ensley, who's been a great new addition to the state legislature. Mike, we appreciate uh, your presence. I used to serve in the State Assembly, so I know the job there. And actually, one of the guys I, I sat near and, and was very fond of back then is your state senator, Joe Leibum, uh, another great leader from this county uh, and really from this uh, state. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be up in the northern half of his district after this visiting a, a business in Manitowoc. It's one of those short days. I started out in Maple Bluff in Madison, went to Racine in Milwaukee, was just over uh, across the way at the Blue Harbor, not going down a slide. I've done that before uh, with my kids, but uh, over at the Charter School Association, and then spend the day from here to Manitowoc to Green Bay, then back to Wauwatosa before taking it off tomorrow morning uh, at 5 o'clock for our next great venture. But uh, it's an exciting time. And it is an honor to be with you all today. I, I was talking a little bit with Mayor Ryan before about some economic development projects that we're hoping the state can partner with uh, here in, in, in Sheboygan County. And i uh, pleased that the mayor's here, both from Sheboygan and from Plymouth. Um, pleased the county board chair's here. And my former colleague, uh, many of you don't know, there's an association of county executives and county administrators. Uh, and you may not know this, but your own uh, leader here in Sheboygan County has actually been the leader uh, of that association for all the county executives and administrators. And we appreciate your leadership there, too, as well, Adam. Um, in fact, it's a county well after my heart, because what has it been, three or four of the last four or five years, you, you've had no property tax levy increase. i got to love it. A county like that. That's a place to do business in. <laughs> and I think of all the great businesses, you did a great job. I mean, talk about a Chamber of Commerce introduction. That You covered the bases. That was perfect. Uh, but I think of all the great businesses. I'll, I'll be back uh, probably later in the summer. Um, I don't really get time to vacation, but when I'm up here, I'll probably come up uh, to Whistling Straits to spend a little time and uh, as uh, others might say, to Vacationville, right? Is that the, kind of the takeoff of the Johnsonville, Vacationville uh, for a little bit, at least for a day? Uh, although I would, would give you one little tip. Uh, when you think about the great food and the great attractions here, last year when I was in Plymouth with Lou, the one mistake I made was on the way out. I hadn't eaten the whole day. I came in for a tour of the factory, and I got so excited, I took a big plate full of cheese, and I ate it all the way over to Toma that night, uh, which is great cheese, but a little tip of advice, eat something more than just cheese for dinner uh, or, or the next day you're not. I know Lou likes eating a lot of cheese, but you should mix a few other things in. So that's my only, uh, my only tip uh, uh, along the way. But uh, uh, you've got some of the best cheese and some of the best products in the country uh, right here on the great shores of Lake Michigan. Uh, I want to share just a few minutes, and then as was mentioned, I'll take some questions. But it's hard to believe it's been about five months uh, since the, there was election for governor, Mike's election and others out there. And I, I remember the night, the other day, I was over at the Country Springs uh, in uh, Pewaukee, in Waukesha County. And that's the place where I had my victory party that night. And I said there's days when it seems like not five months, but it seems like about five years. Uh, and other times when it seems like it was just five days ago. But um, that particular night, you know, after a long campaign of a, about a, a year and a half uh, of running, people asked me on my campaign, what do you want on the podium? In fact, it almost on cue. I don't have this at every speech, but they ask, do you want to sign like the one uh, is in the back over there? I got a kick out of that. He actually brought one along. Uh, you want a Scott Walker sign? Uh, or they said, maybe you want a brown bag sign because, you know, I ran a brown bag campaign. I had signs about that. And I said, no. I said, from November 2nd on, it's not about me. It's not about my name. It's about the future of the state where we're going together. So I had him put a sign on the podium. It's a little bit like this bumper sticker. And it says, Wisconsin is open for business. And the reason I, you can clap for that, you're, uh, that's all right. And, and I said that the reason I put that up was I wanted to send a message as clear and as concisely as possible early on, even before we took the oath of office, something had changed. Something was different in the state of Wisconsin. And so we put that message out, and then the two months from, through November and December leading up to the inauguration, and we tried to make sure we were in the best position possible 
the best position possible to send a message that Wisconsin was indeed open for business, not just in a symbol as a symbol uh, is a, in terms of a project or, or, or talking about something that was just about a sign or a banner or a sticker, but ultimately to show that the work that we were doing, that we showed that substance had taken the place of symbolism, we were moving the state forward. And so starting on January 3rd, we didn't wait for a year or six months or even a month down the road. We took action right away. And literally right after taking the oath of office, I called the legislature into a special session. We brought people in that next morning. We started working on it, and I challenged the members of the legislature. Mike knows this well. I said, in the first 30 to 45 days, I'm calling on you to pass our jobs agenda, part of our special session on jobs. <coughs> Little did I know the legislature would trump that. They had it passed essentially in the first month. Uh, and I think that, and, and the great news about it, you don't see it much in the media, but all but one of those bills that were passed in that special session were passed with Republican, Independent, and Democrat votes alike. They were passed on a bipartisan basis. Uh, and that's important because we need to get back to that. We need to get focused on that. The one thing in this state that can unite this more than anything else is getting this economy going again. Because jobs aren't about Republican jobs or, or Democrat jobs, they're about Wisconsin jobs. And the sooner we get more people back to work, the sooner it helps us take on just about every other challenge we have out there. What we did in those first days and are continuing to do now, because we're not, you know, we started out well, but we're not finished yet. We've got a lot more work to do. But we, we changed the business climate by lowering the tax burden, putting incentives in for job creators, particularly small businesses. We changed the climate when it comes to regulation and litigation costs in the state. We repealed the state tax when it comes to health savings accounts so that small businesses, sole proprietors, family farms, others could have access to affordable health care without the state imposing the tax, one of the last remaining states in the country to still do that. We even did something as simple as change the Department of Commerce. Our Department of Commerce right now, which is headed up by a great former Chamber of Commerce director, Paul Jaden, who used to be the head of the Green Bay Area Chamber of Commerce, is now my Secretary of, uh, of Commerce. Uh, we've, we helped, with Paul's assistance, put together something that will start July 1st, where we go from an entity that in the past has been in part about promoting commerce, but also about regulating commerce, that's the current Department of Commerce, into something that is solely solely about promoting economic development in the state of Wisconsin. It's the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. It's really taken a model that's worked well in counties like this and others across the state, where you take a public-private partnership, where you take the benefit of support from the county, cities, villages, others coming together, but also the private sector, the chambers, and the private sector in itself has had a great benefit uh, here in Sheboygan County and others. We're going to do the same thing when it comes to the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. All those things happen right off the bat. <coughs> Excuse me, and I remember about a month in, in February, I had a reporter from the Associated Press said to me, he came in my office and he actually asked a pretty good question, which doesn't always happen in these interviews, and he said, you know, <laughs> I won't go any further than that. <laughs> but he was writing a story for a national publication and he said, uh, he said, why are you acting so quickly? You know, most lawmakers have barely moved in. A lot of governors don't even know where the bathroom is in the Capitol. And here you pass some of the most aggressive, pro-job, economic development legislation in the country, and it's only a month in. Why is that? So it's real simple. You see, I, I spent about 18 months in a job interview. I interviewed to be the CEO of your state government. I traveled from one end of the state to the other. I did parades and sat down with interviews and toured factories and did all those things and talked to the people of Wisconsin about my vision to face the two big challenges we face, which is an economic crisis and a fiscal crisis. So here's what I'm gonna do. I laid it right out there. Like it or not, I laid it right out. And I said, you know, like any CEO who takes over a company, you don't wait a year or six months or even a month until after the time that you said you're gonna take action. You do it right away. You take action immediately. Because when you face a crisis, any of you who've taken over companies who are in crisis, big or small, know exactly that's what it takes. And so we acted on it immediately, immediately. And, that, and again, we haven't stopped. I mean, that's something that even with all, all the attention and the protesters and others like the friends behind me and around the area here, which I'm used to along the way, uh, you know, I point out that they have every right to protest. That's what America's all about. But the voices of tens of thousands of protesters is not gonna take out and smother out the voices of the millions of taxpayers across the state who know to get the economy going in this state, we've gotta be serious about the economy and we've got to be serious about controlling spending as well. That's what we're all about. That's what's about moving the state forward. Uh, now for us, we're gonna to continue to do more things to put more venture capital uh, into combination between what the public sector can do with the private sector to help more startup companies. 
We're going to do more to help businesses like the ones we talked about before this meeting here in Sheboygan County to enhance the lakefront here and off the corridor off I-43. We're going to help other businesses across the state because we know that the more we can get people to work, the better off we are. And I know it's already having a positive impact. Last week I was in Rock County, which a year ago had an 18 percent unemployment rate. This morning I was in Racine uh, County, which still has about a 12 percent unemployment. We know we have our challenges here in Sheboygan County as well, but we also have seen signs of progress. We've seen real signs of progress, and we see it across the state of Wisconsin. In the first two months of this year, about a week, March numbers will come out, but in January and February of this year, the private sector created 13,000, 13,000 new jobs here in the state of Wisconsin. 8,200 of those were in manufacturing. When's the last time you heard that? 8,200 more in manufacturing. See, that's, that's important to have those statistics at your fingertips because I, I'm convinced, as much as I toured the, the state for about a year and a half as a candidate for governor, and I saw plenty of people were hurt, no doubt about it. Plenty of people were hurting, plenty of businesses, particularly small businesses that were hurting. I also heard from a lot of employers who told me, you know what, we're in a position where we could hire more people, we could put more people to work here, but we're just kind of waiting. You know, about a year ago, I was waiting to see what was going to happen with the federal health care mandate. You know, in the past year, it's been, uh, they knew that like nearly every other state across the country, Wisconsin was facing a record deficit, and a lot of employers said, you know, I'm going to wait and see what happens next. Um, and, and probably rightfully so, because you look earlier this year down in Illinois, which faces a similar budget deficit, what did they do to balance, or at least attempt to balance their budget? They raised taxes on individuals and employers. They didn't really solve their crisis. They've got a pension system that's still only half funded, which means a year from now, they're probably going to be back doing the same thing again. Ours is 100% funded in the Wisconsin retirement system. Uh, but they raise taxes. And for a lot of employers, I get it. They look at what happened in Illinois and they think, my gosh, I'm not going to go out on a limb and hire more people if suddenly it's going to be more, to, you know, it's going to be more costly for me to operate in this state. Well, we wanted to send an immediate and aggressive message, both in the transition and now even more so since taking office, that this is an affordable place to do business. And we are headed in the right direction. And the great news is, even on that contrast with Illinois, in the last couple of weeks we've announced company after company in Rock County and Kenosha County in particular, where companies have come up from Illinois precisely because of that difference. Because all of you as employers know, you make decisions not based on today, but on tomorrow. You want to decide not only where, where's this state or this community headed today, but where's it headed in the future. Illinois is headed towards more problems. They've got higher taxes, more regulations, and they're going to be back because they didn't have the courage to solve their problems. We're heading in the right direction, not only with what we've done when it comes to the economy, but the other great challenge we face is making sure we control government spending. You know, and we looked around the country. There are 45 states, including Wisconsin, that have budget deficits for this year. Uh, the only the handful that don't are, are states that, by and large, have fuel supplies or natural gas or other things that allow them to offset, but everybody else because of the economy and in part, at least in Wisconsin's case, not only because of the economic meltdown, but because of years and years and years of politicians of both political parties deferring tough decisions, of raiding the tobacco endowment fund, of raiding the patient compensation fund, of taking money out of the transportation fund. Or two years ago, what my predecessor in the legislature did was take more than a billion dollars of one-time federal stimulus aid and they used it to plug the Medicaid and the school aid deficit. Was anybody who's got, you know, gone through high school math knows, probably actually junior high math or even elementary school math, you can't do all that and then have the economy melt down and not pay for that. That's why today we face a $3.6 billion deficit. $3.6 billion. Well, in this budget and in the, the reforms we passed in anticipation of this budget, we said it's not enough to do what other states are doing. All those other states I mentioned are cutting aid to schools, to local governments and their universities. But what they're doing there is not giving them any tools. What we did in our budget reforms was say, you know what, if you do that, one of two things will happen. Either you'll push that off to local governments and in turn they're going to have to ma lay off in massive numbers employees in school districts and local governments across the state, or which is happening elsewhere, or you pass that off to local governments and they're going to have to have massive property tax increases. One of the two is going to happen. I looked at that and said, either of those two options is unacceptable. Either of those two is unacceptable. We can't have any more people laid off, uh, public or private, I don't care. At this point, the last thing I want is massive numbers of people on unemployment estate. We need more people working, not less. And I also know in this tough economic time, not only for those of us personally as property taxpayers, 
But for every one of the small businesses in the state that's struggling, the last thing a small business needs is a massive jump in property taxes as we're just starting to recover from the economic recession we face. So I said, let's be progressive in the best sense of the word. Let's be truly progressive and find a different option. And what we did was said, let's give our local governments the tools, not just for today, not just to pass the buck for a year or two, but the tools so that long-term state and local governments here and across Wisconsin can actually manage our budgets. Let's actually give them the tools to look ahead into the future. For us, for that and what we're doing in the biennial budget the legislature is taking up right now, is what we simply did was say, let's make a commitment to the future so our children don't face more dire consequences than what we face today. That's what this is really all about. And, and I think in a way it's working. If you look, uh, and there's all sorts, I don't know if there's any accountants here, but I think uh, CPAs would appreciate this as much as anybody else out there. But if you look at our budget, the biennial budget for the next two years that starts July 1 of this year, we have a budget that lowers, not only balances the $3.6 billion deficit, we lower the structural deficit by more than $2 billion, a 90% reduction in the structural deficit. That's the lowest it has been in the past 16 years. That's the 16 years, it's probably lower than even before that, but it's only been 16 years that they've tracked a structural deficit here in the state of Wisconsin. And that means I'm not just picking on my predecessor. That's the lowest it's been in 16 years of Democrat and Republican governors alike. The reason for that is I looked at what was happening in my state and our state, and I said in the last two years since the economy melted down in the fall of 2008, what I have not seen are businesses and particularly families saying, you know what, I'm going to go out and get a new credit card and I'm going to run up a $100,000 debt and then I'm going to hand it off to my kids. I don't see people doing that. Instead, what I've seen all across the state are people who've said, you know what, this was probably a good thing. It made me realize I was spending beyond my means. And so people have made, you know, they put their priorities up there and they funded their priorities. They found out not just with money, but in life in general. For a lot of people, it's been a good thing because they've realized the most important thing in their life wasn't how much wealth they acquired. It was their family and their friends and their community. And people have made adjustments so that they could continue to live within their means even as the economy changed around them. The only place that hasn't done that is government or at least some governments, some have. Uh, but in large part, state government and many of our local governments across the state have not made those sorts of changes. What we've said in this budget is for us to be able to sustain the kind of quality of life, the kind of public safety, the other things that are part of a priority of what state and local governments provide, we've got to have the tools and we've got to have the courage to make the tough but important long-term decisions to make sure, as I said, our children don't face even more dire consequences in the future. And again, it's working. We've lowered the structural deficit. In fact, um, I, I know the mayors and, and the county officials will appreciate this. Moody's, you know, in local governments, we always look, anytime there's a bond issue, you look immediately at what the National Bond Rating Agency's put out. Well, Moody's looked at our budget, it's been presented a month ago, and they called it credit positive. When's the last time you heard anything called credit positive about a government budget, at least at the state level? It hasn't happened. In fact, if anything, the last several years, we've seen our credit rating go down. It's because they recognize that what we're doing is ultimately having the courage to do what they're not doing in Illinois, what they're not doing in California, what they're not doing in other places across the country, which means two years from now in the next budget, we're not going to face those tough decisions. Other states are going to see it only got worse. It compounded. Uh, and for us, ultimately, that goes back to my first point, that's better for the economy. Because for employers who are here and others who wish to come to the state of Wisconsin, What's the one thing that investors look at the most? It's stability. I remember about a month ago at the height of all this debate in the Capitol, I had protesters, 100,000 probably around the Capitol. Mike, you remember those days? It's, it's kind of, I said it, it's so quiet now, it's actually kind of nice to have a few protesters because uh, the past week, well seriously, it, 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 so I've got two high school sons who play football, and during the summer, my wife and I, when they go to football camp at UW-Whitewater, they're gone for a couple of weeks, and we said we don't know what to do with ourselves because it's so quiet around the house. I said, for the last couple of weeks, it's been so quiet in the Capitol, I didn't know what to do with myself. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll take it, believe me. Uh, uh, but, but, but as I look at that, and, and, and I was there one day, and I, I talked mainly, did interviews, you know, with local newspapers from Wisconsin and TV stations and radio stations. But every once in a while, you know, obviously it picked up a little more interest than just Wisconsin. I do these interviews. And one day I sat down with the guys from Reuters. And the reporter from Reuters was very fair, very forthright. And he said to me, you know, I look at all these people around and he, he said, uh, what do you say to investors out there? You know, investors don't like chaos. Uh, they want stability. He said, 
how can you make the case that this is a good place to do, you know, to invest in? And I, I leaned over very nicely, but I kind of got in his face and I said, you know what? Because of what we're doing, because of the courage we're exhibiting to do what we need to do on a long-term basis, this will actually be one of the best places in the world to invest in. Because while nearly every other government in every other part of the state, of, or every other part of the, the country, and for that matter in many countries across the globe, are failing to do what we need to do, failing to do what many of you have been doing since the economic recession in the private sector, and is making sure that your, your companies are stable enough to survive the recession and ultimately achieve and, and succeed after that. Government hasn't been doing that. We're doing that here in Wisconsin. That makes us a more stable, a, a more trustworthy, a better place to ultimately do business on now and into the future. So that's really at the forefront. I'll just tell you the last two quick things and I'll take a couple questions before we head off the man at the walk. Uh, one is, you know, as, as much as people, and it's quieted down a little bit, although there'll be peaks and valleys along the way, as much as people look at the, uh, the economic numbers, and, and again, you know, we've had some good numbers the first couple months. There may be times not as good. Hopefully there'll be, continue to be times where we see, you know, 10, 12, 15,000 new employees in the private sector each of the next couple months uh, forthgoing. We'll know we're on our way solidly, not just on getting out of the recession, but leading the country when it comes to numbers of getting out of recession. I believe we can be there. And the reason I believe that is not based on blind hope. The reason I believe that is because we've done that before in Wisconsin. You know, I'm from Wauwatosa, but I, I grew up down in Delavan, a town of about seven, 8,000 people in Walworth County near the state line. Back about this time 25 years ago, we faced almost identical circumstances in this state. Think about it. 1986, we were coming out of a national recession. Uh, the, Wisconsin was far beyond where the United States was coming out of the recession. We had a major budget crisis in state government, uh, and there was a lot of what Jimmy Carter had called back in the 70s malaise. Uh, kind of feeling like we were stuck here in Wisconsin. And then a friend of mine from clear on the other side of the state in Elroy by the name of Tommy Thompson came along. And in his first term, he talked about changing the business climate of the state. In fact, he didn't just talk about it, he acted on it. And the things that he did to put in place changes in state government that made it easier to do business in Wisconsin uh, got a lot of grief at the time. In fact, a lot of people, defenders of the status quo, said you can't do that, you can't touch that, you can't change things. They gave him a lot of pushback. But ultimately, those policies, by the end of his first term in 1990, had helped the people, not the government. The people of Wisconsin create 258,000 new jobs. I talked about a goal all throughout my campaign of helping the people of the state create 250,000 new jobs by the end of my first term. Some of the cynics in the media said, well, you can't do that. Where would you pull that number out? Did that come out of thin air? I said, no, it came out of the history books. It came out of a generation ago. We not just had a governor, but we had people in the state who put their faith not in the government, but in the people and employers of the state who empowered the private sector to put more people to work. And in turn, the people responded by putting 258,000 people to work in that first term. If we did it a generation ago, not only can we do it, I know we will do it. I know we will do it. And if I know for no other reason, simply on a personal basis, I, for one, I'm not going to concede that my two sons, Matt and Alex, don't get to grow up in a state at least, at least as great as the state I grew up in. That's my commitment to you. Now, the last thing is an assignment before I take some questions. As I look around this room, as I often do at Chamber of Commerce functions and others out there, I'm talking to business leaders, people probably can appreciate what I'm saying more than anybody else out there. I see a lot of nodding heads. I see a lot of smiles, a lot of people affirming what I'm saying up here. And maybe someone reporting this would look and say, you know, well, it's, you know, you're preaching the choir. It's the Chamber of Commerce, right? Well, my father, when I was growing up, was a minister. He's long since retired, but he was a minister. And one of his, his colleagues, another minister in another church, was asked once, Pastor, why do you preach to the choir? He said, it's real simple. I want the choir to sing. So my question today is simply this. When you go back to work, when you go to church on Sunday, when you go to Rotary or Kiwanis or any other function you're at, when you go around the state or around the country, I need you to sing. Because I can put all the bumper stickers out, I can put billboards up on the state line, I can put ads out all across this country. But the most effective way to get people to reinvest in Wisconsin or here or to encourage others to come to the state of Wisconsin and invest in the first place is right in this room. You're the choir. You are the people who can tell others that, you know what, something has changed in Wisconsin. Something has changed in Sheboygan County. 
Something is more dynamic and more exciting than ever before. We have the tools, we have the resources, we have the employees, and we have the entrepreneurs to make this a great state again. And we are. But the best people to tell that story are the people not just at this podium, but the people here in this room. So simply put, I'm asking you to sing. Now, some of you I know, so you don't literally have to sing because I've heard you sing before. <laughs> I don't know how your voice is on that, but uh, I don't know if you're a good singer or not. I haven't sat next to you at church, but, uh, uh, but, but, but whether it's singing or just telling the story, what I need you to do is help tell the story about how Wisconsin truly is open for business. With that, I'll take some questions if you like. Sure. Uh, could you discuss um, voter ID and same-day registration and where we're going to be going with that? Yeah. Well, you have a great champion in your senator here, Joe Leibum, actually has been the author of the bill that I was the author on more than a decade ago uh, to require photo identification for voting in Wisconsin. Uh, my hope is uh, now more than ever that that will get passed through both the Assembly and the Senate. The hang-up is not that the legislature doesn't want to act on it. It's a question of there are some in the legislature who just want to pass photo ID and some that want a larger, more comprehensive package. I think for a lot of election clerks, particularly for those who are now going to have to go through a recount, um, Local election clerks, as much as anybody will tell you, uh, that what a challenge it is to do same-day voter, voter registration, particularly in presidential elections. Um, and that's not a partisan issue, it's just a simple fact of uh, matter. I remember years ago when I was in the legislature, I talked to clerks from one end of the state to the other, and, and not just for the clerks, but for most of our poll workers. Because uh, most of our poll workers, God help them, are, are retirees. They have to work 13-hour days, and at about five, six o'clock at night, come in on the presidential election, suddenly 500 people show up at the polling location and half of them want to register that day, it's pretty difficult. Um, so just logistically, uh, I think it would be wise, if nothing else, to move registration back to the Friday before. Um, people say a spur of the moment. Well, the campaign's pretty, it's pretty obvious what's going on by the Friday before. <laughs> so, I mean, to me, if you can't decide to go by Friday the week before and have to wait till the day of, I, I don't have a whole lot of empathy because I think it's pretty clear. Um, unless you haven't been paying attention, to which some of us might question why you should vote if you haven't been paying attention, um, you know, it, I think it makes sense uh, to change it. I think it would be easier for clerks. It would make, for all the questions that some have, uh, allegations that some have made about uh, improprieties or irregularities and that, those sorts of things would be altered or would be corrected. I think if clerks had enough time to check the polling list, to make sure people were registered, it would deal with uh, felons voting, double counting, things of that nature. One more? Okay, sure. Can you expand on what the statement you made last night that there's two governments in Wisconsin, one in Madison and the rest of the state? Sure. Yeah, the person asked me about the election and I said, well, I'm really focused about jobs and, of course, as the media often is, they then proceeded to ask me three more times about the election. And they said, well, what's your reaction? I said, well, it's, 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 it's you know, clearly a divided state. It is, it, this is as close to a 50-50 tie as you can get. One and a half million votes and you have 204 votes uh, that's before the canvas. The canvas, as many of us know, I haven't looked at elections before, could easily change a couple hundred votes either way, just on the canvas, let alone the recon. Um, but you've got you know, about a 50-50 tie. But you break it down and look, uh, it's because you had unbelievably large turnout in Madison and almost all of it went for one candidate. Uh, and I just said it's one of those where if you look at, it's not that the state's divided, it's that you've got largely an overwhelming vote in Madison versus most of the rest of the state. Um, and that's a reality. I'm not, you know, suggesting that Madison isn't a part of Wisconsin, it is. Uh, but <laughs> although, al al although the, there are days when uh, Governor Dreyfus was a great friend of mine, and and and, and I remember back in in uh, I don't remember him saying it, I just remember hearing this because I wasn't quite old enough to be paying attention to Governor Dreyfus at that time. But when Governor Dreyfus ran for governor in '78, uh, he was behind in one of the polls, and as only Governor Dreyfus could say, he was asking Milwaukee. He said. Uh, um, what do you think about the, the polls? And he said, the only polls I care about are the ones who vote in the south side of Milwaukee. Uh, but the uh, <laughs> Polish neighborhood. But the, but, the other, but the other line he said that I, I love is he said, um, and I don't know if I got the miles right, but he said that Madison is 30 square miles surrounded by reality. Uh, <laughs> and I think Tuesday might have reaffirmed that. Which is why when people ask me about my days, I say my best days are when I'm out of the Capitol. I know you said one more, but you have one more quick hand. I'll take it, be quicker, and then get out. A factual thing, and a comment you said that we're, um, that we're, we're going to be getting the structural deficit reduced 
billion. Two billion. Uh, could you define a little bit? What do you mean by the structural? Sure. Deficit? Yeah. Actually, that's an excellent question. Structural deficit, or where in the past. Governors and legislators put things in the budget, but they don't pay for them all at once. So they push them off. Um, they push off things like school aid payments for years. And again, both parties unfortunately did that more, some more than others, but they push off the school aid payments. The biennium begins on July 1st. So they take school aid payments from the, uh, the last biennium and they push them off till July 1st instead of paying them in June. So that would be hundreds of millions of dollars that really should have been paid the previous two year cycle that pushed off to the future. Um, they, they take money out of accounts. Or, for example, what Governor Doyle did two years ago, uh, where he had the largest structural deficit ever, is he took all this federal stimulus, or not all of it, he took a good chunk of the federal stimulus aid, and instead of using it on roads and bridges and infrastructure, which is most people, I think, thought that's what it was for, which you can agree or disagree with it, but at least it's a one-time infrastructure cost, he plugged it into the Medicaid and the school aid deficit. Now, it looked, to him, looked pretty good at the time. The problem is, if you've got a couple billion dollars in that now, I'm stuck with a budget that has the big hole that wasn't filled two years ago, plus a growth uh, in programs like Medicaid, but I don't have any of that federal money, which is what I warned two years ago. Um, so all those things are what's part of what's called a structural deficit. We haven't eliminated it entirely, uh, but we've got it, again, 90% of it reduced, and my hope is two years from now we'll have it completely gone. But that's one of those things where from a bond rating agency, which ultimately saves us money in operating, because you, if you have a better bond rating, you get, it costs you less to borrow uh, and easier to pay off past borrowing out, but also just in terms of stability. Um, in the future, hopefully all of our economic growth is upwards, but if you ever got a point where it's down again, not having a structural deficit means you're not going to run into trouble again. Okay, thanks very much for your time.